What's up? Hey, today we're talking how to start running without going too far, too fast, skimping on recovery and getting an injury. Basically, if you've been wondering how to start running, but you're not sure how far, how fast, how often you're afraid to ask the dumb questions, this is the video for you. Before we get into it, I wanna say a huge thank you to Element for partnering with me on today's video. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that has everything you need and nothing you don't, with each serving containing a science-backed blend of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. If you have a hat that looks like this or one with sweat stains like this, chances are you sweat a lot. I do too, it's fine. But when we sweat, we're not just losing water, but minerals. Why should we care about minerals? Because our muscles need them to contract properly. When your hydration gets out of whack, when you start losing minerals in your sweat, you cramp, you lose steam, you lose intensity. Running is hard enough as is. Starting running is even harder. So to help support your body, I've partnered with Element and they're gonna send you electrolytes for free. All you gotta do is cover the shipping and they will send you samples of seven of their different flavors today i am drinking the citrus salt this is definitely more of like a traditional sports drink kind of vibe but if you want something that's really refreshing like a mixed drink after your run my favorite favorite free favorite flavors are the mango chili and lemon habanero jeff and i powered through those boxes so quick so get yourself some samples try it out i'll put all that info in the description box down below otherwise shoot me a thumbs up and let's get on with it bit of context my background is in weightlifting not running i am by no means an elite athlete athlete, but I have learned to love running for me. I started running a few years back to help with my weight loss journey, which if you're interested in running for weight loss, I will link my video on that either somewhere up here or down below. But at the time, it was a real struggle. My heart rate is real high. I can literally feel like my diaphragm, I feel like it's ripping out. I could hardly run for five minutes without feeling like I was going to lose a lump. Flash forward to 2020 when I finally committed to following a proper running plan and I ran my first half marathon. You know, it was 2020. So I, I ran it on my own, but I ran for two hours continuously, crazy. In past videos, I've shied away from giving more specific running advice because I'm not a professional runner. I don't have the best times yet. We probably won't. We're gonna get there. And because I'm not the best runner, I didn't feel qualified to give you advice on running. But the reality is I am a certified personal trainer, soon to be performance exercise specialist. And so it is well within my scope to give advice on frequency, intensity, etc., as well as practices to reduce risk of injury with an activity like running. I'd love to get a run coaching certification in the future, but I'd also like to have a little bit more running skill under my belt so that by the time I actually start coaching that, I have the experience and the science fully on my side. This is a roundabout way of saying that today's video is directed towards beginner runners, people who probably have room for improvement with cardio in general. You are committing to running as your form of cardio, but consider this your no dumb questions like who, what, when, where, why, how version of a beginner running plan. First things first, what is running? Beyond just the visual you have in your brain, from a fitness standpoint, what's actually going on here? Well, for starters, running is a form of aerobic exercise, where aerobic exercise describes any activity that uses large muscle groups, can be maintained continuously, and is rhythmic in nature. Think running, jogging, swimming, circuit training, and the list goes on. Going a level deeper, your body needs energy to move. And the main way your body gets energy is from a molecule called AT. TP. Depending on the intensity and duration of activity, it will challenge different energy systems, each of which goes about getting ATP in a slightly different way. The most efficient way to make ATP, though, is using your aerobic energy system, which uses oxygen to operate. Your heart pumps oxygenated blood throughout your body. Where more heart beats equals more perceived difficulty equals a harder to sustain activity. However, as your aerobic fitness improves, your heart adapts to grow bigger and stronger. So with each beat, it's actually moving a larger volume of oxygenated blood, meaning you can maintain the same output of activity, but with a lower perceived difficulty, AKA running can feel easy eventually, but it starts with building your aerobic base. The first consideration with aerobic training is intensity. Aerobic improvements, AKA those improvements that'll make running feel easier over time, actually occur at low to moderate intensities, not by going all out all the time. While there are several different ways to gauge your intensity, the most popular among runners tends to be heart rate, where different heart rate zones correspond to different intensity levels. If your goal is to build 
build your aerobic base, you should spend most of your time in zone one, working to include intervals in zone two over time. And while most activity trackers now measure your heart rate, there are more ways than just heart rate to gauge your intensity. One of the simplest low tech techniques would be using something called the talk test, where different levels of being able to maintain conversation correspond to different intensity levels of activity. While this may not feel as accurate as watching your watch data, multiple studies have now confirmed that there is a correlation between the talk test and heart rate data using both the cycle ergometer and treadmill exercise. Now that we know the basics, how do we put this all together? How far, how fast, and how often should you be running? While you may see more advanced runners posting their mile splits or weekly mileage online, when you are first starting out and trying to build that aerobic base, instead of speed, I want you to focus on intensity. Instead of distance, I want you to focus on duration. These are mental shifts I wish I had made sooner that would have made this journey so much easier on me, especially mentally. But basically, speed and distance are things that we can worry about once we get to a place of being able to run consistently. For now though, I need you to focus on building that base so we can get to that place. So I'm going to break down a few scenarios depending on your starting point, showing you sample progressions based on run training three to four times per week with the goal of working up to 30 minutes of running continuously. Before I get into it, one thing you need to know is that no two people will respond to training in the exact same way. That's why instead of giving you a strict like week to week rigid training plan, we're going to follow a more flexible approach that allows you to progress at your own rate based on your intensity and your perceived difficulty. This should ensure adequate recovery while also reducing your risk of injury. Scenario one, you live a sedentary lifestyle. You've never done cardio or it's been quite a while since you last did cardio and you're feeling it. You feel out of breath walking up the stairs. You struggle and feel drained by everyday activities like getting the groceries. Your starting goal should be to work up to three to four 30 minute walks per week at a zone one intensity. It doesn't matter how slow you go so long as you're maintaining that intensity for the duration of the activity. Only moving to the next phase once you're able to complete all the workouts from the previous phase at the prescribed intensity and duration. Moving on to scenario two, this is for you if you've completed progression number one, or if right now you can run for a couple minutes at a time, but you feel like you lose steam, you lose speed, or can't maintain intensity after that. For this progression, we will be using the walk-run method, where we start with intervals that involve more walking as compared to running, progressing to intervals that involve more running as compared to walking, where walking intervals are done at a recovery or zone one intensity, and running intervals are done at a zone two intensity, where you only move to the next phase once you're able to complete all the workouts from the previous phase, with most of your walking intervals done done in a zone one intensity. The trick here is that upon going from a run to a walk, your heart rate doesn't decrease immediately. There is a period of recovery where you have to catch your breath before you can return to that zone one intensity. So say you have a two minute walking interval after running. In order to confidently progress to the next phase, you should be spending most of that time at a zone one intensity. So if it takes you well over a minute to catch your breath and get back to that place, you should probably spend at least another week on that phase in order for your fitness to improve and confidently move forward. Whereas if you're catching your breath relatively quickly, relatively easily, then you should be safe to continue moving forward. And finally, we have scenario number three, which is for you if you've completed progression number two, or if you're at a place where you walk run regularly, you spend more time running than walking, but you can't quite break through to that next level yet. This is the progression that will get you up to 30 minutes of continuous running. It will build upon the walk run method that we used in progression two, but instead of starting with intervals that involve more walking than running, we'll start with short short intervals that involve more running as compared to walking right from the start and extend the duration of running from there. Progression criteria are the same as progression number two. You only move to the next phase once you're able to complete all workouts from the previous phase with the majority of your walking intervals done at a zone one intensity. At this point, we know that we're running, walking, or doing some combination of two, three to four times per week. So what else can we do to reduce risk of injury and improve running consistency? Well, if you've spent any amount of time researching running online, you've no doubt read about the importance of a proper warm up and resistance training routine before each run or resistance training workout. Start with foam rolling. I like to do a quick total body scan, gently rolling out larger muscle groups in any areas I know get tight, pausing on any knots or tight spots for 30 seconds before moving on to the next. From there, I do three to five dynamic stretches, taking my joints through a full range of motion without pausing or holding any one position to the point of pain or discomfort, then finish with some jump rope or run specific exercises to get my blood pumping, rhythm going, and muscles activating. 
As for resistance training, most weightlifting plans you find online will assume that you are only lifting weights. And so they'll prescribe like five or six workouts per week, a ton of exercises, a ton of reps, a ton of sets, which can make it hard to balance your energy and recovery between workouts. So in my experience, the best advice I have for you is to forget about bro splits, forget about body parts splits, commit to full body training. This is the best way to balance weights with running or any other activity for that matter. All it takes is three sessions per week, dumbbell only, nothing fancy. Make sure that in each workout you are including these exercises, some sort of squat. Here I am doing a front squat, some sort of hinge. Here I'm doing a conventional deadlift, but you could also do a bent leg hinge, something like a hip thrust. Make sure you're doing single leg exercise. Here we've got a lateral squat, been loving these lately, a vertical or horizontal pull. Here I'm doing a bent over row, but pull-ups are also fantastic. A vertical press and or core exercise. The tall kneeling press is great for getting your core and shoulders involved. And then finally, a horizontal press and or core exercise. I love push-up variations here. There are many ways you can program full body training. This is just a simple template. You can swap it and out exercises, keep it fresh for your weekly routine. I also have a ton of examples of full body workouts on my Instagram, as well as on the Team Plans YouTube channel, where there are full length free follow along workout videos. That's a real tongue twister. Or if you just want a structured program where it's all laid out for you, I will link my plans in the description box down below. That is it for today. This is by no means an exhaustive list of everything you can expect to learn on your running journey. That would be impossible to condense into one video. Every stage has its struggles, has its lessons. Today, we talked about the first stage of this journey, getting to a place where you can run continuously. But I feel like this is where the real fun begins. And I know fun is subjective, right? Because when I got to that place of being able to run continuously, it also uncovered a lot of weak points for me. But that is part of the enjoyment, knowing that running is not this boring thing. It doesn't have to be boring. There can always be some new aspect of the skill to wrap your head around, to learn, to improve upon. And there's so many different angles of attack for it. So if you would like a follow-up video on running form, troubleshooting any of this, full body workouts, like any aspect of what we talked about today, let me know in the comments down below. If you would like to grab some electrolytes for yourself, look, the weather's warming up. I highly recommend it. I don't want you to not be performing your best. I feel like I'm drinking a mixed drink in my office, but like not day drinking, like, I'll put all the info you need in the description box down below. It's a crazy offer. It's a crazy deal. Highly recommend you jump on this before it's gone. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.